and today I am here with another new anime of chitated protagonist. The protagonist of this story here is called Takato Yagiri, and at the beginning of the whole story, we see him as a little child walking in a corridor full of bodies and bullets eating from all directions. In the midst of this very crazy scenario there, the youngest walks towards a camera and asks, where is his seal? He continues walking towards a room, and the door suddenly opens. There, a woman points a gun towards Asaka, holding her there as hostage. Asaka asks the woman what she wants, but the woman tells her to shut her mouth. Our protagonist, who should be scared, actually runs joyfully into the room, happy to finally find Asaka. In this, the woman says to Yagiri not to move, otherwise she will dig a hole in the minds of Asaka. However, to the unhappiness of the woman, suddenly some waves appear and the woman falls dead to the ground to see all this. Asaka gets a little confused, but the Yagiri simply hugs her and smiles as he says they should come back. After that rolls that passage in time and we see our protagonist there, more old man, and from nowhere he is awakened by his friend, the Tomatika Danura. The girl is in panic and when awake, Yagiri asks who she is, but he quickly remembers that she is that girl with a difficult name to decorate, the carrot. At that moment, he remembers that before taking a sleep, they were on a school trip. So he asked if they had already arrived. However, Tomatika says no and asks him to get up and see everything that's happening. And when our protagonist looks around, he sees that several of his classmates died in different ways. Look at this one here, how beautiful. He's been dragged from side to side, and as our protagonist is already used to this kind of scene, he gets pretty good and soon decides to look out of the bus. Quickly, he notices something wrapped in it, so he thought they were being attacked by a giant snake or a throne. So to start solving soon, that B.O., our protagonist, takes a microphone from not knowing where and plays against the guy. When the guy is hit, the thing that perforated him begins to move, and as he turns his attention out of the bus, the Yagari realizes that the thing which attacked them is a huge dragon. After flying, the monster decides to attack them with fire, and realizing this, the girl next to our prota enters in despair. There was our protagonist looking at the monstrous until from now on Tomatika grabbed him and he felt a very soft feeling in his arm. So he, who did not intend to do anything, now decided quickly to open his mind and utter a single word, telling your enemy to die. After he did that, the dragon suddenly fell to the ground, deed lifeless. Having done this, Yagiri tells Tomatika that they are now safe, but she is all confused asking what happened. And while the girl was desperate trying to understand everything, the Yagiri took her console and started playing a video game, and the girl ended up getting mad at it, saying that this is not the time to play, and after seeing him play a little bit, she simply says he's a junk in video game and starts giving tips. But soon, she remembers the situation they're in and warns him that it's not time for it. He asks if she's feeling better, and she confirms that said, our protagonist asks her to explain what had happened while he was with his eyes closed, so Tomatika reveals that their bus was following its course normally, but after passing through a tunnel, they met in that strange field. Everybody got confused, and she even even asked her friend if it was always that way out there. However, her friend couldn't answer. Suddenly, a girl entered the bus and greeted everyone who was inside. She, she introduced herself to Zion, the granddaughter of the great wise man. Their teacher stood up to complain, but ended up having a very sad ending. Soon afterwards, she acted as if that was nothing, telling all the children to calm down and pay attention to what she is going to say and do nothing stupid. All became paradisiacs. When the girl, she said that they shouldn't bother her, otherwise they'd all have the same fate. She explains to them that her power level is 530,000, and then soon she shows the driver's head, saying that all this is a joke and that she expected them to laugh. However, they come from a different world, so the jokes there are not going to work the way she expects. After the Karingant comic moments, Cyan finally decides to explain everything to our targets. Basically, she has summoned everyone here because she is looking for candidates to wise men. Basically, this world to which they have been invoked is ruled by wise people and their numbers are quite low. So she called them as a way to get new wise ones to increase their power. That said, she points her hand forward throwing a magic and Tomatika thought everyone was going to take a swing or lose their heads and close their eyes. But when she opened her eyes again, she saw the students shining. However, she was one of the few people who didn't start shining. Xian then revealed that it has installed a skill hack cheat all over the world and now everyone who has been blessed will be somewhat like players, able to see even those crazy hack menus. At that point, Tomatika got confused and asked her friend if she could see anything. And yes, her friend could see. And she was even using her fingers to move the
the menu, explaining that she can see some colored letters telling her status. Sion then reveals that this system can only be used in this world, and it is called Presen, and everyone must use it to the fullest to become strong-wise, and they have a month to do that. At this point, Tomatika raises her hand to ask a question. She claims she can't see any kind of status, and she hasn't even shown, and in response to that question, Sion simply answers that some people are not compatible, and that Tomatika should deal with it alone. To make things worse, Sion opens her mouth to say that those who can't become wise only serve to become cattle that produce magic energy, and after humiliating Tomatika, Zion explains that the first mission of all will be to confront a little dragon, and that now they must try not to be eliminated immediately. Having said that, she goes away, and Tomatika sits down, revealing that she didn't understand was nothing, so her friend only mentions that there are some details about this mission on the screen, and it turns out that their duty in the real is to escape the dragon and get to the main city, and when he hears that Tomatika is talking that the dragon does not exist, no, is she crazy? And at this point, one such Yasaki Suguru begins to act as the leader of all, he claims that they should try to complete the mission, and also says that they all need to work together, and that in order to do so they all have to reveal their strengths and weaknesses, so everyone writes their names and statistics in pieces of paper, but Tomatika realizes that there are four students, including her, who did not shine, and one of them is our protagonist who is sleeping quietly and favorably, never slept so well in his life, and some even complain there in his bone soil. From nowhere, the people who have legal powers there start to get out of the bus, and those who haven't shown decide to leave too, but Tomatika stays behind to try to wake up the Yagiri. Another girl tries to convince her to leave soon, but suddenly they hear the two guys arguing. It turns out that the Yasaki guy does not want to leave the other four without powers to go with him. The offender without power complains, but Yasaki tells him to shut his mouth because he is the general of the class. So demonstrating the great power he has received, the guy breaks the bus seats and explains that this is the power that he has received and he is strong. Yes, being only at level one, summarizing the power of the guy has already climbed his head, scratched, then another girl tells Yasaki that if he is so strong, he should protect him. However, Yasaki says that this is not part of his plan. Everyone gets confused when he hears this, and he orders the girl next to him to use his gift. She activates his ability of charm, which does not affect anyone, just leaves everyone more beautiful. And while the Yasaki was going away, he explains that this ability makes people attractive to the Mon, summarizing the dragon that is nearby will attack the person that is most attractive, and this will give people who have legal power powers, a chance to escape without having to fight, and that was the decision that all those who have powers made. When Tomatika was betrayed, she still couldn't believe that her friend really abandoned her, but Yasaki reveals that the girl really did it, and in response, Tomatika continues to try to believe her friend, saying that Yasaki must have forced her. In the end, Yasaki comes out and locks the door, and those who remain try to open the door and suddenly they hear a noise outside. Tomatika soon thinks it must be the dragon I thought did not exist exist, when suddenly something hits the bus. And after all this explanation, our protagonist finally finds a problem in all this situation. Basically, he has no way to load his console in that world. So he stands up saying that according to all the story he's heard so far, the outside is now safe, the calm down. Tomatika asks if Yagiri did anything to the dragon, and he says that the dragon just fell and died. Together, they decide to go out the window and check the surroundings, so Yagiri realizes that they they can go to the mountains, to the city, or to the forest. In this, Tomatika points to something flying in the sky, and after observing, he realizes that they are his three classmates. What surprised Yagiri was the long-distance sight of the girl, and after speaking that, he asks if he should kill those three friends, and in response, she asks what's wrong with his mind. But Yagiri simply answers that they left them behind to die, but Tomatika still refuses to kill her, and simply using logic, Yagiri says they may be hostile to them, but the girl is still a little confused. So when the guys start getting close to them, they get a little confused to see the dragon die. One of them quickly, he notices Tomatika alive and he starts complaining, revealing his plan to turn her body into a zombie so he can practice those activities that start with N. Yeah, it's about this
this kind of thing that these three guys were talking to each other, and by hearing all this, Tomatika comes to the conclusion that these guys aren't going to be your friends. And suddenly, one of the guys throws a huge ball of fire, which barely reaches Tomatika. The guys keep talking to each other about how to refine their magic, and as one of them is a healer, the other is a hero, and the latter is a necromant. The guy who threw the fireball tells Tomatika to join them without resisting, and she is a little confused about that request, thinking that the guy wants to date her. But the three guys just reveal that they actually want to have fun with her, the little way you're connected. Soon Tomatika realizes that they are behind his body, and Yagiri is impressed to see everything that is happening in front of him. At this point, the necromant complains, saying that Yagiri and the girl there seem to be very close, but Yagiri simply reveals that he has decided to take care of her. When the fireball guy tries to hit him, he points his finger at him and tells him to die. The other two laugh, but are shocked to see the guy face the floor. They ask what happened, and Yagiri answers that he simply ordered the guy to die. He tells the two still alive not to move, but the necromant decides to check his friend. Then Yagiri tells him to die too, and the guy dies. Now, only the healer remains, and Yagiri tells him that if he moves, he will die. And after saying that, our front gives us permission to go. Go healer, check if your friends are alive or dead. The fat obeyes and uses his healing ability, mentioning that he can heal anything in an instant. However, her friends do not move, and Tomatika realizes that it was Yagiri who killed the dragon. And having that power, he could have acted earlier, saving those people, and he could well have explained about his power to her earlier. Then Yagiri opens his mouth and says that the fat guy over there in front of them is very stupid, so he needs to explain his power in detail so the guy can understand. He then opens his mouth and explains that his ability is the instant death call to any target. Actually, he doesn't need to activate any skills for people to die, he just needs to think about it. The fat healer says this is impossible, but Yagiri asks him if he wanted to test the theory. Fearing, the fat accepts defeat and tries to approach Yagiri, pretending to be scared. However, what he really wanted was to hit him with a magic blow. However, Yagiri simply tells him to stop. After all, Yagiri has another skill. Basically, this skill allows you to know if someone intends to kill you or not, and to make it worse by combining his ability to instant death with that other ability, he can kill the person only if he tries to kill him is he connected. And after hearing that, the fat guy finally gives up. And after the guy gives up, the Yagiri asks why they are all so arrogant, so early with these new powers, while they are still at level 1. Then, the fat reveals that it's the second time the three have come to Chimu. Basically, the first time, they defeated the King of Demons. And when he hears that, Yagiri asks Tomatiga if the three missed any class, and she says no. Then the fat reveals that when they came home, only a few hours had passed. And after hearing that, Yagiri decides to kill him, but the fat man begs and even asks Tomatika to help him. However, this time, Tomatika says she's only alive because Yagiri saved her. Therefore, the decision he makes is the best. The fat guy thought it was cold and took out a slavery item that he intended to put in it, making her his servant. But now, not to pull it out, he wants to put that necklace on himself. So, acting as a pervert, he wanted to become the servant of Tomatika. But finding this very, but very disgusting, she asks if she can transfer that power of being the owner of a slave to someone else, and he says yes. Then she transfers the guy to Yagiri, who decides not to kill him. Instead, he orders the fat boy to go into the forest full of monsters. But before that, he should leave all his items. And finally, he shouldn't tell anyone about Yagiri and Tomatika. Without options, the fat curator obeys orders. And Tomatika asks if it's all right. In response, our prota says it's certain that this fat guy is going to pull it out. So it's better to let him go there in the woods. And in the end, the girl asks our protagonist if he doesn't suspect she's going to denounce him or pull him out. And our prota replies that he is calm. He is in favor. After all, it was he who decided to protect her. Hearing that, the girl becomes brave and like a tomato and says they've never talked much before. She asks why he decided to protect her. So our protagonist says that initially he didn't intend to protect anyone. After all, he's a little bit of anxious to everybody. However, due to her soft and cozy item, he felt that he should protect her. Hearing this, the girl became embarrassed and angry and began to complain, saying that men are all equal. Meanwhile, the woman from Zion was there in her bed, relaxing. From now on, a guy arrives to tell what happened to those who should become wise. In his account, the guy says four people died on the first mission. Sion says, put, calm, it's normal that she die. However, when the guy says that two unskilled people died and two of rank S died, then the mess is a little bit different, isn't it? To make things worse, two were killed by the dragon and two from rank S died instantly, without warning.
happening, and by hearing that, Scion came to the conclusion that someone received the magic of instant debuff. Top, very cool. After hearing that, she goes back to bed and stays there thinking. And so, the first episode of this anime ended.